the time pool, I wanna be keeping you warm. I got the right temperature for shelter you from the storm. Hold on, girl, I got the right tactics to turn you on. And girl, I wanna be the papa, you can be the papa. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, all right. Hmm. Well, I think the, uh, the reason they bring me up here is to, uh, to show you guys that if, if I can do it, I, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Um, you know, my, my outcome today is not to have some fancy PowerPoint presentation or, you know, some type of script, but really just something focused on an outcome to create an experience to move people emotionally. And, you know, to keep it real, to keep it transparent, to keep it authentic with some emotional sincerity. And, you know, how many of you have a fear of public speaking? Anyone? Anyone? You know, there was a study they did. They listed the top ten fears in life. And as they listed the top ten fears in life, the number one fear that people have in life is speaking in public. And as I looked down the list, number seven was dying. They'd rather die than speak in public. <laughs> So I had somebody backstage, they said, you know, Jeff, do you get nervous, you know, when you come up here on stage? And uh, I said, you know, it's really interesting for me. You know, I like to get in state and come from a place of confidence, but also a servant's heart, you know, having that confidence, that absolute certainty, but coming from a place of a, of a servant's heart. But the other thing that works for me is I always ask God, I said, look, please flow through me to give me the words to serve the room. And if you get, thank you, thank you. And if you get out of your head and into your heart, and you, it's not the me, me, me song, it's truly focusing on serving others, and uh, you go, go from the head to the heart, it's, you can never go wrong with that emotional sincerity. So if any of you are ever thinking about, if you're coming up on stage, uh, that's the things that I focus on. So anyway, I'd like to uh, do this. Could we have, you guys have been sitting for a while. Please stand up. Everybody stand up and turn to the person next to you and get at least two or three Juice Plus hugs and kisses, if you would. <laughs> All right. All righty. Um, just out of curiosity, if we could bring the lights up a little more in the room, how many of you, this is your very first time you've been to a Juice Plus conference? Please stand up. Let's see all of you stand up. Let's give them a big round of applause. Wow. Wow, more than half the room. How many of you have never heard me speak before? Three quarters? I thought I was more famous than this. What's going on here? Well, it is, uh, it is my pleasure to be with you here to, to this afternoon, I guess now. It's afternoon. My name is Jeff Roberti. I'm from uh, Sarasota, Florida. And I was a rising star at one time. Uh, and was on, you know, my very first conference and the very first experience and how it changed my life. I remember leaving that conference just crying tears of joy and thanking God for answering my prayers. Where this average person with an above average desire had an opportunity to go out there and do something and grow as a person and become more and have more and be able to give more and it changed my life. Matter of fact, I did a call uh, not too long ago with one of the Gen Y, you know, I was a 24-year-old when I started. I was a Gen Y, I guess, of my time. And I was on a call with one of the, uh, the local leaders here, Emma, and she said, you know, Jeff, would you come on the call with us? We'd love to have you share with the group and, you know, and come on. And so I was in my home in Florida, on the beach. I have a home there in Florida. My office is my spare bedroom there on the, uh, at the house. So I come on the call, and they've got all these lines linked in. I, there must have been hundreds of lines linked in. And she goes into, and she's introducing me. She goes, and tonight, we have the top income earner in the world with Juice Plus. He's calling in tonight from Sarasota, Florida. And he's been doing this before we were all born. <laughs> I was like, well, let me turn up my hearing aid here. She's like, no, I didn't mean it. <laughs> 
But you know, it's, um, it's exciting to, uh, to be part of this mission, to be part of this journey. And I guess what I should do is to start off is just share with you a little bit about my story and then share with you maybe a couple success principles that have helped me over the last 29, 30 years in the business. Uh, you know, first of all, uh, I, I, when I got introduced to the company, I was a customer first. It was a different product line back then, but I was a satisfied customer. I saw merit and value in the product. And a friend of mine uh, told me that there was an opportunity to go out there and share this product, to build up a customer base and build up a distributor team and have your own business and earn what you're worth and be your own boss. And I didn't come from a wealthy family. I didn't have a higher education didn't have any experience or background or money at the time, but you ever just meet somebody that's hungry, that has a burning desire, and that hunger and that desire influences their willingness to work, and they're teachable? How many of you feel that you have a really good work ethic, no matter what you do, you take pride in it no matter what you do? That's me. I showed up with that work ethic. No matter what I did, whether it was waiting tables, mowing lawns, working construction, whatever it was, I took really great pride in that. Just like Bob and Sue Burdick and some of the stories you've heard of from of average people that took this thing and really took it serious. Treated it like a business, not like a hobby. So I started in the business back then out of desperation. There was more month than there was money. And so I came into this looking for some things to change in my life financially. And I'll never forget one of my original mentors, the late, great Jim Rohn. Anybody heard of Jim Rohn? This guy, what a, what a, a gift. And he said, Jeff, you can have more in life if you become more in life. And for things to change in life, you've got to change. And for things to get better, you've got to get better. Don't see things the way they are, see things the way they can become. Another one of my mentors, thank you, was a guy named Zig Ziglar. Have you heard of a good old boy named Zig? The late, great Zig Ziglar. He said, Jeff, if you help enough other people get what they want out of life, you'll have everything you want out of life. So when I came into the business with all this desire, this hunger, this willingness to work, my sponsor, the guy that introduced me, had been in the business for like two or three years. And he hadn't had the success that he wanted. Sometimes you hear these success stories and it hasn't happened for you that fast. You never know who the next person is you're gonna talk to. So he shares the product with me. He shares the opportunity with me. And my very first month in the business, he quit and went to another company. Big mistake. <laughs> but he prejudged whether this 24-year-old broke kid waiter living in a little apartment was going to do anything. Somebody said, well, Jeff, has anybody ever heard from him? Do you ever? I said, you know what? He was spotted about two years ago with a big sign that says, kick me here on the back. He was wearing. He left a fortune on the table. You know, I remember when I first got involved in the business, you know, I, I was so struggling financially and I, and I remember, you know, they used to have a commercial that said, the American Express card, don't leave home without it. Well, they called me up and said, Jeff, do leave home without it. I was that broke, that desperate. So when I came into the business, and I went to my very first conference like this, I'm living down in Sarasota, Florida. It's up in North Carolina, Asheville, North Carolina. And I drove up to that convention, and I have to say, I didn't have the money for the hotel. I didn't have the money for the airfare. But you know what? You do what you got to do. And I got myself up there. And I sat in that room, in the front row, taking it all in. And I remember leaving that conference. You know, I had my one suit, little skinny tie, long hair. And I, I remember driving back home just crying those tears of joy. And you know how we all have a list of excuses in life? I went home and tore up that list of excuses. I said, if it's to be, it's up to me. Don't look up line, don't look down line, look in the mirror. That's the number one recruiting tool. You step up, Jeff, right? So I decided when I tore up that list of excuses, why not, if you're gonna do this, give it a good yes or a good no. 
So I said, you know what? I'm going to jump all in, all out massive action. I'm going to be the best distributor in my organization. I'm going to lead by example, right? Hold yourself accountable. Set really high standards. Not push people, but lead people. Inspire you so you can inspire other people. Would you follow you? Your daily method of operation, your work habits, your attitude. So I started growing. My attitude is, is grow me, serve you. I focus on growth and contribution. I focus on going out there and helping other people and meeting their needs. Not my needs, but their needs. Caring more about your customers and the results they're getting more so than the money you're earning. Caring more about your new distributors and your teammates and helping them get off to a fast start in their success more so than the money you're earning. You go into a relationship to give, not to get. You're not measuring what you get in return. What you give in life or what you get in life might last a while, right, Jerry? But what you give lasts a lifetime. And as your check starts to grow and you start to move up the marketing plan, it's a measuring stick of the impact and the amount of lives you've touched with our product and our opportunity. So that's how I look at it is as that starts to grow, look at the difference, look at the impact you've made around the world. Another thank you. Another thing I'll share with you is this. You know, everybody says, well, you know, the how part. I'm not going to get up here and talk to you guys about techniques and how to do the business. I'm going to talk to you about concepts. Listen, concepts are constant. The basics, the fundamentals of how to build a business, whether it was 30 years ago or today, your job description is to go out there and share the story, share the mission, mission mission-driven, purpose-driven, getting customers, building a growing customer base, building a team, Building relationships, that's your job description. The techniques and the different means and ways of doing that have certainly changed. When I started back then, we had a rotary dial phone. Our three-way was, hey, the person who introduced me is right here. We got excited when we had a fax machine. Anybody remember a fax? Well, you guys are really young. But you know, today with social media and the example you see with John Alawadi and Katie and Sinead and Emma and all these people that are just going out there and showing us what's possible today. I'm an example of longevity. 30 years. Getting paid off of work you did 30 years ago. Not only is it one thing to go fast and build it and compress a lifetime of work into a three to five year plan, but it keeps paying residual and passive income for the rest of your life. Right? Exciting. Just out of curiosity, make sure I got the right crowd here. How many of you like the idea of making money whether you work or not. Is that popular over here? (laughs) How many of you would like to stay at home and work in your undies? (laughs) How many would you like for your children to have wealthy parents, right? You've got that opportunity. You know, I'm doing this conference here and then I go on to Madrid, Spain, and then I go over to Phoenix and do the conference there. I mean, it is just a whirlwind the next three weeks. Matter of fact, I go to... uh, Madrid, and I've got a, one of my top distributors there, a guy named Paulo Meucci. Anybody heard of Paulo? Paulo, what a great guy. What a story this is. Some of you may have been around for a while, and your businesses are kind of flat. Paulo had been in the business for 15 years. He goes, Jeff, I, 15 years, I was stuck. 15 years, 39 club, good life, but stuck. And then all of a sudden, he saw what you guys were doing over here. And he goes, ah, I need to learn some new skills. I need to become more valuable to the marketplace. I need to become more relevant. Different techniques, different things that are working. Still the same concepts, but different techniques. A couple of years ago, I called Paulo up. He has a place in Fort Lauderdale. He lives down in Rome. And I called him up and I said, hey, Paulo, it's Jeff Roberti. Happy birthday. How are you doing? He goes, ah, Jeff Roberti, Italiano, Americano, Avanzano, yeah. 
And I said, Paul, how are you doing? And he goes, oh, my business exploder. Exploder. He goes, yeah, exploder. He goes, one word, Facebook, Facebook. <laughs> he goes, I go where the people are, right? And I hung up the phone, and I thought, what a great training. <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> But he got a couple gin wires in their 20s and he started doing some new things and getting creative and getting innovative. And he built his business and now he's gone from 39 club and he's shooting to go to a thousand club. From a hundred thousand a year to a million a year. Like the stories you hear in this room. What an example of what's going on around the world today with Juice Plus. I believe... The big money is ahead of us, not behind us. I believe the best of times are in our future, not behind us. I truly believe the best is yet to come. And my message to you is it's your turn now. Give yourselves a hand. So let me just share this with you. Somebody said, you know, Jeff, you want more excitement, more enthusiasm, wear own underwear. You said you get a little down, just pull those babies out and take a look at them, red underwear, more excitement, more enthusiasm. <laughs> I had another one of my mentors say, Jeff, don't wear anywhere, under, any underwear at all, and that'll get your blood really cooking. <laughs> Let me scratch that one off. I thought that was funny, but that is not, <laughs> not working over here. Red underwear, no. <laughs> See, you got to have some fun, guys. Lighten up and your sails will brighten up. If anything, I want you guys to see that, hey, this guy's just like me. If he can do it, I can do it. He's training out of his journal. He's just an average guy that said, you know what? I'm tired of making excuses in life. It's time to step up. You can make excuses or you can make money, but you can't make both. So thank you. So let me talk to you about this part. The how part of the business really is the easy part. Guys, listen, it's 80% mindset, 80% psychology, 20% mechanics. What do I mean by that? The how part is not the part. It's a simple business. It's fruit and veggies in a capsule. Which part do you not get, the fruit and veg or the capsule? You know, it's an opportunity to have your own business and earn what you're worth. What part do you not get, the big money or the free time? Help me here, somebody. But what I'm saying is this, you got to get your why down. If you take one thing away from me here today, get the why down. Why are you doing this? Put in your notes, reasons come first. Why are you doing it? What is your reason? And you want to peel the layer of the onion till you get down to a why that makes you cry. Something that's emotionally charged that'll give you a compelling future. You know, we'll get you up early in the morning, keep you up late burning the midnight oil. That extra 10% effort produces 90% of the results. You know what my attitude was always in life? If a man's gonna pay me for eight hours worth of work, I give him 10 hours. He pays me for eight, I'm gonna give him 10. I'm gonna do that little extra 10%. But I had a why that compelled me and a compelling future, emotionally charged. And for me, back then, not coming from a wealthy family, my why back then was so powerful. And maybe you could relate to this or come up with your why, what drives you. But not coming from a wealthy family. And the oldest of three boys, I remember sitting in the back seat of my mom's car. And some of you have heard this story, but for new people, I want you to really listen to this. And for those of you who've heard it before, maybe it'll get you spinning your wheels and thinking about what really drives you. My why's evolved today from where it was back then. It's certainly a different why. But back then, I remember sitting in the back seat of my mom's car. My mom was a proud woman, but the car had rust on it. It had dings on it. And she acted like it didn't bother her, but I knew deep down inside it hurt. You know, people talk, and I used to sit in the back seat of that car as a kid and say to myself, if someday, someday, if I could, I would, I'd like to help my mother and father. 
If someday I'd like to be able to help my grandparents. If someday I'd like to be able to do this for my favorite charity. Someday. So I come into this company with that hunger, that desire, that willingness to work. And I start, I don't go out and buy anything. I reinvest back into my business. Back into proven systems, proven people, living below my means, just pouring it on. And had this char emotionally charged why. And then after a few years of really building it, the first thing I did was I went out and bought the, my mom the car of her dreams. Not a car for me, for my mom. So I found out what that car would be if my mom could have any car of her dreams. I found out my mom had very good taste, by the way. <laughs> so without her knowing, I was able to take my income from the Juice Plus world, from NSA, and I was able to go out and purchase that car and pay cash for it. And I put in all the options, all the bells and whistles, everything. Look, if you're going to shoot a king, kill him. Don't wound him. If you're going to do it, do it right. And I got the insurance paid, the gas card, everything. And she lives up in the mountains. I live down in Florida. And listen to this. All that hard work. Thinking about that first little bottle of juice plus you went out and put on your first preferred customer. All that hard work now equals being able to do this for my mom. And on Christmas morning, I have this car sitting outside her home without her knowing, with a big red bow on it. And you know how you get the morning dew on a car? The sun was coming up, and it was shining on this car, and it was just beautiful. Just beautiful. And my mom's inside, and she doesn't know this. And I have her come to the door. And she comes to the door, and I, she, she, I open the door. She sees the car. I, t I tell her how much I love her and how proud I am to be her son. And I see these tears, and I, and I give her the keys, and I see these tears of joy running down my mother's face. I thought I was the one that was giving. I was the one that was receiving. The floodgates were open. How many of you would like to be able to do that for your mother? All right? How many mothers would like your son to do that for you, by the way? You know, I had my mom at a conference, of, I don't know how many years it was after that, maybe 10 years. She was at a convention, and I was closing it in the United States, and there was four or 5,000 people in the room. And when you get a chance to acknowledge your mom in front of an audience, you take it. And I was telling this story and just had her stand up, and we played some music and the flowers and the whole thing. And I'll never forget after that, she pulled me to the side after everybody had cleared out and the lights were off, and she goes, you know, Jeffrey, I wish you wouldn't tell that story. <laughs> she goes, you make us sound like we were so poor. And she goes, and by the way, that car now is over 10 years old. <laughs> and she said, it's a two-wheel drive and it's a little slippery. <laughs> and I said, I get your point. And she goes, and another thing, don't forget you only have one mother. <laughs> so I can't afford two the way this is going, right? It's so funny, Gordon knows this story. My mom was, um, she wanted to uh, remodel her kitchen. I don't know if any of you ever remodeled a kitchen before, but I thought a remodel of a kitchen, what, 50,000, 100,000? So I said, Mom, no problem. You want to remodel the kitchen? No problem. And I'm out blowing and going, building my business. Get a call, well, your mom's kitchen remodels up to 100,000 now. Then I get another phone call. It's up to 200,000. Her kitchen's now over 300,000. It got over to 500000 for a kitchen remodel. And I finally had to call her and say, Mom, what's going on up there? I said, are you building a whole new house? <laughs> and she goes, well, you told me I could remodel my kitchen. And she goes, and if you don't want to help me, I'll just take out a loan. <laughs> I was like, okay. 
But you know what? Now I've been able to buy our home on the beach and several cars and all these wonderful things. Another thing that charged me, guys, have you ever lost somebody you love from stroke cancer or heart disease? Before I got into this business, I lost my father at the age of 46. You talk about a defining moment, something that shapes your destiny, a moment in time. When I got that phone call at 4 o'clock in the morning that my father had a massive heart attack and that was it, there was no second chance, it was the worst day of my life. And I remember getting off the phone and I was like just emotionally just sick. And I remember just hearing this, I was like, that's it. And I'm in my early 20s, he's 46. And I said, you know what, Jeff? You could turn the worst day of your life into the best day of your life based on what you do. It's not the event, it's the meaning you give it. It's not what happens in life, it's what you do with what happens in life. And I took that, thank you. Like we talk about, Jerry, divorce your story, marry the truth. And I took that deepest pain in life, and instead of just playing the me, me, me song, I said, you know what, Jeff? How can you grow from this? How can you learn from this? What lessons are there? How can you become more? How can you have more capacity to serve and help someone else from this experience? And it shaped me. I took that experience and, and I turned it from the worst day to the best day. Look guys, I give it all back. The 90 million in commissions and bonuses, all the success, all the money in this business. If I could have got my own father on Juice Plus, because it just might have, because it just might have saved his life. It just might have saved his life. When you know what you know about Juice Plus, it's not an opportunity, it's a responsibility. How could you not share this with someone? And if I would have got him on Juice Plus, and he would have started taking Juice Plus, let me ask you a question. How many of you, since you started taking Juice Plus, you eat more fruits and vegetables? How many of you drink more water? How many of you thought about working out in the gym? At least it's a thought, right? <laughs> but it starts a snowball process, doesn't it? I mean, it starts to get some things moving. And I remember, you know, just this whole experience. Look, I'm Italiano. I, I thought the whole foods meant the whole pizza when I first came here. <laughs> so that was something that drove me in the beginning. The mom, the dad. You know, I had some, last year I was in Israel and I had some kids ask me in Israel. And I was talking to them in Tel Aviv. And they were like, Jeff, was it worth it? Was it worth working that hard in your 20s and 30s and giving up some of the, the partying with your friends or the time on the beach? Was it worth the price you pay for this type of success? Because I was willing to say no to the things that really weren't that important so I could say yes for the rest of my life to things that truly mattered. Right? I'll share with you a Based on time, I can't tell you this story. Okay, I'll tell you the story. <laughs> I told these kids, I said, let me share with you another story. I got a phone call from my mom about five years ago. My grandmother's 92 years old. She's getting really ill. My mom calls me up on the phone and she says, Jeffrey, Granny's really, she's not doing well. And she goes, I don't know how to ask you this. But she doesn't want to go to one of those homes. She wants to stay in her home. She'd like to stay here in her home. And it's expensive. I said, Mom, stop. The answer is yes. I said, absolutely. And I said, you tell me, was it worth it to be able to tell your mom yes to keep your grandmother in her home? I was in Australia last year. And I was telling this story. And I came back after sharing this story. My mom called me up. This is five years later. My grandmother's 97 years old. And she said, just a couple hours ago, your grandmother passed away peacefully in her bed and I was holding her hand. And I said, you tell me if it was worth it. 
to be able to do that, to be able to give more and do more in life like that. You know, so today, why do I do it? Thank you. Today, why am I here today? Why are some of these top earners from around the world here today? Why are we here? My why's evolved. It's not out of desperation, it's out of inspiration. Here today for you. I'll never forget where I came from. I'll never forget when I filled out my application. I'll never forget coming to my very first conference. We're here today for you. It's your turn. It's your chance now. It's your grand opening. You got a chance here to not to be a selfish NMD and stay home in, in your house and life's not about me, it's about we. I decided to retire into my business instead of from my business. You know how you have people that have the success, that, you know, that science of achievement, they have the money, but you ever meet people that have money but they're not fulfilled? Anybody? They're not happy? Success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure in life. In this business, it is rich in relationships, love and connection, the two spiritual needs, growth. Aren't you the happiest in life when you're growing and there's progress? And a chance to contribute beyond yourself. A chance to make a difference in this world. A chance to be part of a movement. Something that's mission-driven, purpose-driven. Something bigger than yourself, Jeff. Something that's full of meaning and purpose and fulfillment. Emotional and spiritual revenue. I mean, you're talking about something here that is priceless. Do you know how it feels when you have somebody come off that's a new rising star or they're stepping up and they say, Jeff, thank you for believing in me more than I believed in myself in the beginning. Thank you for playing that small part in my success. Isn't that worth it? Well, I'm out of time. Clock's off. That's it. Um, you know, people always say, well, Jeff, where do you get all this energy? You seem so fired up and so much energy. How many of you take the capsules, take two capsules, two and two a day? How many of you do three and three? Four and four? Anybody do more than that? Sometimes when I'm traveling, I'll take like a, a bottle in a week, right? <laughs> I feel like Superman, like you got a cape on the back. People say, where do you get all this energy? Well, I did a shot of tequila before I came up. That's what I really did. <laughs> but now you start taking the product. You know, one of the success tips I want to share with you is you have got to inspire you first. You've got to live the mission. You've got to become a product of the product. It's not what you say. It's how you feel about what you say. People communicate more with feelings than they do words. Step one is you become a raving fan customer, period. And it's, wouldn't you agree with me? It's easier to share something that you truly believe in and you're passionate about, and it's not from here, but it's from here, and to go out and share it by word of mouth? That's how it works. You've got that emotional sincerity. Listen, people will forget what you said, but they'll never forget the way you made them feel. So I guess in closing, I'll share this with you. I had so much more I wanted to share, but let me just go back here. God, I had quite a training here, by the way. <laughs> in closing, it's this. It's called action. It's the marching orders. What's next, Jeff? What's the next step? You know, you're at the right place at the right time, but it doesn't mean you get the prize. Timing is very important. I believe the next three to five years, you'll see the biggest growth in our 45-year history. But you've got to step up. You've got to take this thing serious and have that sense of urgency, that fear of loss, and really say, you know what? I'm going to set my standards high. I'm going to lead by example. I'm going to be the best distributor. I'm going to hold myself accountable. Watch the feet, not the lips. Distributors do what you do, not what you tell them to do. You lead, not push. 
You go out there and set the example. And if you do that, if you get focused, you have that consistency and that discipline on the paying activities and step up, your business and your team will explode. So I guess in closing is this. Thank you. If you've been searching in life like I was, you have found a home. Welcome to the Juice Plus family. Welcome to the company of the heart. God bless you. I thank you. I appreciate you. I love you. And thank you.